This is KGW News at Noon. And good afternoon, I'm Ashley Korslin. We begin at noon with an update on the coronavirus. We have just learned that six people in Washington state have now died from the coronavirus. Five of them were from King County. One was from Snohomish County. What you're seeing right now is a press conference. Health officials in King County are holding this press conference. They're going to be talking about a lot more information about this case. You can head to our Facebook page or KGW.com and you can watch the live stream there. Now officials say that all six people died at Evergreen Health Medical Center in Kirkland. They also say they're waiting to get test results back on 29 additional cases. Governor Jay Inslee has declared a state of emergency, which allows state agencies to use more resources to prepare for a possible outbreak. Governor Inslee will speak at a press conference this afternoon at 3 o'clock. Now, meanwhile, health officials confirm a new presumptive case of coronavirus in Oregon. That brings the total number of cases in Oregon to three. Here's what we know about the latest one. It's in eastern Oregon. The Oregon Health Authority says the patient lives in Umatilla County and is now being treated at a hospital in Walla Walla, Washington. The person did not travel outside the U.S., we're told. The OHA also says that person went to a basketball game on Saturday at the gym at Weston Middle School. As a precaution, the school district has closed the gym for deep cleaning. It's important to point out that all three Oregon cases are being called presumptive positive. And what that phrase means is that we just still need information from the CDC in Atlanta for confirmation. The first two presumptive cases in Oregon are connected. Both people live in the same home in Washington County. One of them is a man who works at Lake Oswego Elementary School. And because of that, Forest Hills Elementary is shut down until Thursday. We got video of cleaning crews inside the school this morning. They've been deep cleaning the building since Saturday. Saturday. We talked to a Forest Hills fifth grader and her mom about all of this today. No, I'm not really that scared. It's just, it, it feels weird just to know that it's at my school. I think they're doing all the right stuff and, uh, you know, having them out of school for a couple extra days is not a bad thing. You know, get it all taken care of and then they're safe. Lake Oswego district leaders say the cleaning at Forest Hills should be done by tonight. All other schools and buses got extra cleaning over the weekend as a precaution. If you did any shopping this weekend, you probably noticed long lines and this empty shelves. A lot of people are worried about all of this news of the coronavirus, so they're stocking up. These are photos from the Hollywood Fred Meyer. The store was selling out of things like toilet paper, hand sanitizer, Lysol wipes and soap, and a lot of people were buying bottled water. The CDC says the risk of contracting coronavirus, though, in the U.S. remains low. But as Tom Costello reports, officials say this is an evolving situation and they're just not taking any chances. With tens of thousands of coronavirus cases worldwide, including at least 80 here in the U.S., the federal government now trying to reassure the public it's prepared. We will have more and we will have more community cases. It's simply just a matter of math. The CDC now says it will allow hundreds of labs across the country to test for the virus, to more quickly identify potential patients and track transmission. We now have 75,000 uh, tests available out there in the United States, and over the next week that will expand uh, radically on top of the 75,000 tests available. But fear and misinformation continue to spread. Across social media, many, including some celebrities, have posted photos wearing face masks. Health experts say that's sending the wrong message. The Surgeon General tweeting that people should stop buying them, explaining masks are not effective for general prevention and need to be reserved for health care providers and those already sick. To help with demand, 3M is now increasing production to 35 million masks per month. In corporate America, it's anything but business as usual after the stock market took a huge hit last week, the biggest decline since the 2008 recession. And with fears mounting, giant companies including Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan and Amazon are telling workers to avoid unnecessary trips. The auto industry is in trouble too, scrambling to find parts and prevent shortages, facing delays from Chinese supply chains. And now experts predict car sales could fall by as much as 2.5% this year. Some conferences around the country also canceled. Worldwide, travel is taking a massive hit as well. Delta and American suspending flights between the U.S. and Milan, Italy until late April at the earliest. United halting some flights to Japan, Singapore and South Korea. 
Meanwhile, retail is hurting, with international supplies being held up and shipments delayed. Even some brides to be scrambling now to find wedding dresses before their big day. Tom Costello, NBC News, Washington. Well, a lot of you with travel plans are wondering what you should do because of all of this. Our Brittany Falkers breaks down the different travel notices. Okay, so hundreds of you have been texting us here at KGW throughout the weekend with your questions about the coronavirus. And this is a question we're seeing a lot. Should I cancel travel plans? Well, that depends. Right now, if you're traveling within the U.S., the Centers for Disease Control says you do not need to cancel your trip. If you're traveling outside of the U.S., however, you're going to have to check your destination and to see if that has a travel notice. Now, there are various travel notice levels based on health risk. Warning level three is the most serious, telling travelers to avoid all non-essential travel. Right now, that's for China, Iran, South Korea, and Italy. Then there's alert level two. This is for high risk groups like older adults or those with chronic medical conditions. You're recommended to postpone plans to level two countries. And right now, that is Japan. Finally, there's watch level one. And this means the risk is low. Travelers shouldn't put off or cancel plans, but they should be taking health precautions. The only destination at level one right now is Hong Kong. And the CDC also wants to remind travelers that the risk of getting COVID-19 on an airplane is low. And that's because air is filtered and circulates on planes, making it harder for germs to spread. And we have a link to all of the CDC's current travel notices for you at KGW.com. We want you to keep those questions coming, too. It's easy. All you have to do is text us here at 503-226-5111. Okay, it's time to grab your phone and vote in today's poll. We want to know if the coronavirus is impacting your daily routine. And so far, about 68% of you, the majority saying no, it's not. You can weigh in at KGW.com slash votes or click on the vote tab in our news app. It's time to take a look at the weather. Now we want to take a live look from over downtown from our Rose City Sky Cam. Just sort of a gray day out there. Rod, you're tracking light rain for today. Oh, I was, I was waiting to hear your explanation. Yeah, it's <laughs> not the greatest look, is it? I blame you, I guess, really. <laughs> <laughs> our Pacific City camera, Ashley, to you at home. Good afternoon. Pretty much looks like downtown Portland. Very, very gray. And you can see the light raindrops on the camera lens. So this flow of moisture just continues to shoot down over us. It really doesn't look like we will get any breaks in the cloud cover today. You can see the green. The uh, light rain showers will continue from time to time. This is still a day where most of us probably don't even get up to five one hundredths of an inch of total rain. So a little drip around, but not much more than that. And it's quite a bit drier. It has been so far. I think it continues to be if you folks down Salem. Uh, nothing on the radar. McMinnville's pretty dry too. So the rain's been kind of clipping Portland and then moving off to the east around Sandy and into the Cascades. Uh, Haystack Rock right now from our Cannon Beach camera, 46 degrees. Temperatures won't do much. Boy, you can see that low clouds just hugging the West Hills. 45. Um, if we get enough dry weather this afternoon, we could still get up to around 50. If the light rain showers continue at around PDX, we won't make it. But the winds are light, and otherwise it's really not bad to be out. 46 at 8 o'clock. One good cold front this week that brings some pretty good rainfall and some mountain snow. And we'll have that update for you on my seven-day forecast, Ashley. All right, Rod. We'll see you soon. Thanks. We have an update now on the search for Allison Watterson. She's the 20 year old from North Plains who went missing just before Christmas. Yesterday, some of her belongings were found near Pumpkin Ridge Road. That's where she was last seen with her boyfriend. We don't know what those belongings are at this point. Washington County Sheriff's deputies searched the area, but they did not find anything else. Allison's mom, Misty, says the new discovery gives her more hope. It's the first sign of anything in 10 weeks. She's been missing 10 weeks today. Um, so, you know, it was like getting hit with a ton of bricks for sure, you know, because we're out there searching constantly and we're just not finding anything. So. And Allison's mom, Misty, there asks anyone with information on Allison's whereabouts to come forward. Well, there was a celebration of life this weekend for the two children swept out to sea on the Oregon coast earlier this year. Lindsay Nadrich was at the memorial and talked with the kid's mom for the first time. And it just feels like a battle almost every day. Like I have to have a battle plan for getting through. And some days are easier than others. Um, but it's just a club I never wanted to join. 
There's no way to be prepared for what happened that January weekend to the Stiles family. Jamie, Jeremy, and their two kids, seven-year-old Lola and four-year-old William, were at the Oregon coast with friends when tragedy struck. We've been to the beach hundreds of times and thought we knew everything we needed to know. That Saturday, Jamie says she and her mom went shopping while Jeremy and the two kids went for a walk. They were on an off-beach trail when a sneaker wave swept them out to sea. Jeremy survived, but the kids did not. He's doing better. It was hard for him. Um, he was there. He almost died. Um, so it's been really tough for him. He, I can only imagine what the scene was like, but he was in it. And um, he struggles with like not being able to be the hero that he wanted to be in that moment for the kids. Their whole world forever changed in an instant. It's just out of order deaths are especially tragic ones that happen. And you just ate breakfast with your kids and then they're gone when you come back. It still feels surreal for everyone that Lola and William are gone. Many tears and stories were shared as dozens gathered to celebrate their lives Sunday afternoon. They were just the most loving, fun, crazy in the best way children that were so kind of beyond this earth. Jamie says the grief will always be with her, but the support they've received from everyone has been a huge help. She says strangers will stop to give her hugs. Others have delivered food, donated, and sent messages of love and encouragement. Yeah. Just thank you for the support and the messages. I promise I read them all. <laughs> and I uh, burn out phone batteries trying to respond to everybody um, on a daily basis. And, and I will get there. I, I really do want to say thank you for people who took time out of their day to send me something or um, just wish our family well. Vestal Elementary, where Lola went to school, is now raising money to build an all-inclusive playground they plan to dedicate to the kids. If you want to donate, we'll post more information on KGW.com. I'm Lindsay Nadrich, KGW News.